right? Brace yourselves because I have a great budget list for you. We're going to look at my top 10 favorite Ethan Grow knives. For those that didn't know this, Ethan Grow and CH knives, they're actually made by the same OEM, which is why you're going to see the names used interchangeably. Hey, how you doing? If this is your first time here, my name is Jay. Go ahead and consider clicking on that subscribe if you're looking for knife reviews. They get right to the point. Let's go ahead and get started with number 10. I've got for you the CH3530. We get some very comfortable uh, contoured. So if you stare down the sights there, you can kind of see it. Contoured G10 scales and multiple deployment options. You can either open the knife using the flipper tab or you also, of course, have the thumb hole and you saw the spidey flick. Yeah, it's, it's a good time. It's got a ball bearing pivot. So yeah, that action. Just a couple quick shakes and she drops right closed. Very versatile, three and a half inch D2 blade. And notice it does have, that's a full flat grind. Number nine is gonna be the smallest knife on the list and it is the EF922. You're looking at about a 2.8 inch blade and 3.7 inch handle, which does mean yes. You know, since the blade's under that three inch limit, it should be legal to carry, hopefully, in more areas. It also happens to be the only knife on this list with a 14C28N Sandvik steel blade. And check this out. Yeah, that's a detent lock, which I think makes this knife way better suited, uh, you know, as a secondary or, or backup carry and you'll be glad to know that it does so like it does require a really good amount of pressure towards the tip of the blade to go ahead and break that detent lock free and then close the knife i mean you can still do it if you push down here Oof. it's just a little bit it's just a little bit more difficult and they put jimping check this out they put jimping in all the right places. I personally would not use this knife for anything other than like light duty cutting. All right, coming in at number eight, this is gonna be the EF963. Now here's one that has a really, I think it's a pretty unique blade shape. And yeah, that is, I'm not gonna call it an axis lock, but let's say an axis like lock, because at first, I honestly thought that this might become my new favorite Ethan Grow knife. I mean, I do, I love that blade shape, nice and wide, but as you can see, since it's sitting at number eight, that didn't really, uh, that didn't pan out too well. I added a quick thumb stud. Now you might not need to do the same, but I kind of had to put this on there there really isn't much room to get access, you know, at the, at the thumb hole. A slow roll, sure, spidey flick, oh yeah, works just fine. But it's just a little bit tough for me to get my, my thumb in there to flick open that uh, 3.4 inch D2 blade. I mean, if I give it some wrist, sure. The X-ish lock, it does work great with the ball bearing pivot. And what I like is that it requires, it requires like slightly above average force, you know, to operate the lock. It's not really like, have you noticed with some Benchmades, it's, it's not really as mushy, I guess. I don't know what other word to use to describe it. And other than that thumb hole situation, my only gripe, is going to be with the deep carry clip. Yeah, it is only one position. A knife that is so frustratingly close to being ambidextrous, why would you not, why would you not drill two holes on the other side? Now sitting at number seven, I have the CH3001. Now there is two different, there's two different versions of this knife. There's one in titanium, which is this. It's a it's a frame lock. And then there's also a G10, but that one is a heck of a lot bigger 
than this. That is a blade at about uh, 3.8 inches. It still has the exact same uh, D2 steel, except it's larger with G10 scales. I went ahead and weighed this, and this knife comes in at a super lightweight, only 2.9 ounces. And this has, and I'm not kidding when I say this, this has one of the sharpest factory edges I have ever I've ever used. I mean, the action. Oh yeah, we got to look at that. Watch this. Yeah, all I got to do is give it like one little half a shake to get it started. And <laughs> did you see that? And then it just drops the rest of the way closed. That's amazing. Now at number six, I have the EF966. I think that this is a solid choice for those of you that maybe, you know, maybe you've always wanted uh, a Benchmade bug out but you haven't been able to pick one up yet because it's a little outside of your budget as far as the the price is concerned. And you, as you can see, they have very similar looking blade shapes, except the even grow is, it's gonna be a hair longer at about 3.3 .3 inches. And it's also, let me flip these around. It's also gonna be, just a smidge thicker at about 2.5 millimeters. Pretty decent micarta scales uh, going on here, which it is also available. It is available in black. You know, if the green, if this green color really isn't your thing and the traction, it's, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's not, not the best, but I will say that it is, it's slightly better than like the micarta than the traction on the uh, QSP Penguin micarta here. So yeah, the, it's just a little bit, it's a little bit better. I don't love this pocket clip because of, well, its size. I mean, it takes up, look at that. It takes up more than, more than half of the area on the handle. Guess what? It is one of the few EF knives yeah, look at that. It is a two position pocket clip, which means that this, okay, this is the only knife on the list that is truly ambidextrous. Now it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be too tough to find a replacement clip for this because it has that very common, very common hole configuration. This knife is also super lightweight at about 2.9 ounces. I've been having a hard time dialing in the action. Let me show you what I mean. Yep. That's exactly what I mean. It's not really, I mean, I really got to give it a good shake to get it to close. Yeah. So when I go ahead and I did, I went ahead and loosened the pivot. Once I do that, the blade, of course, then it drops shut, but you know, then that introduces a little bit of blade play. At the five spot, I have the CH3509. We get multiple deployment options using either the, uh, the flipper tab, which let me go ahead and demonstrate, or you can also use that thumb hole and it's got great action. I mean, in both directions and you saw, oh, this is so easy to spidey flick open. I mean, even with that, four millimeter thick blade stock. This is a way better slicer than, than I expected. The G10 scales are very, very comfortable and they do have, oh yeah, they've got just some really good traction, which is, I think it's kind of important with this knife because considering, yeah, this jimping, it's, it doesn't really work. It is just there for decoration. All right, how about number four? I have the EF-910. One thing that for the life of me, I just don't get is why even have, why even have a thumb hole if it's not gonna be accessible? Look at that, from both sides, I, I, I don't get it. Check out this gorgeous three and a half inch D2 drop point which also, it also happens to be about 3.5 millimeters thick. Go figure. I want to show you this. At first, I totally did not understand why. Do you see there? 
down towards the pummel end, how it kind of flares out. I, I didn't understand why it was there and I was kind of wishing that it wasn't. But then as I looked at it closer in the closed position, look at that. It just creates a really nice aesthetic. Number three, we're looking at the CH3504. You guys know that I make, I make a heck of a lot of top 10 list videos. And this knife here has appeared on a handful of them. And I've even had, do any of you remember there was a, there was a mini version that I used to have, man, do I kick myself every day for not holding on to that? Because now of course, of course I can't find them anywhere for sale. It doesn't matter whether you have like the budget priced G10 version or this $100 uh, S35BN, which with titanium one, I just, I flat out, I flat out love this drop point blade. I love it. I mean, even with all of its issues, like the, it's, it's, it's heavy at about 5.4 ounces. And I mean, it's got that like, uh, what is it? Like a hinderer, hinderer like uh, hook for a flipper tab. And let's not forget, let's not forget about the, uh, the, the half of a skull that's <laughs> milled into the, uh, into the scale. All right, we're almost there. Number two, I've got the EF959. I must admit, I am a big fan of this. Uh, it's a three and a half inch D2 blade. I mean, it is unlike any other blade in my collection. And even though it does kind of, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of the Ganzo FH41, which I also love. It is, this knife is perfectly, let's look at it. It's perfectly centered and it does have, it's a little bit thicker than usual liner lock. Wait till you see this action though. Wait till you see this. Oh my. Yeah, that's another one. It just takes like just a half a shake and then that drops shut. Even though I don't love, like check out these holes. I, I don't love these holes in the G10 handle, but it does, the traction is so good with it there. This was close to being my all time favorite even grow knife, but of course they had to go ahead and ruin it with a one position shallow carry pocket clip. All right, here it is. My number one favorite even grow knife, the EF 954. I absolutely love almost, almost everything about this knife. I mean, it, it flips well, it cuts well, and I think that it looks even better. The G10 scales. Yeah, those are contoured and very comfortable. They just feel great. Oh yeah, they feel great in hand. Action in both directions. Yeah, that's good to go. My only issue here, and just like most of the knives I showed you today, I mean, it's just got the one position pocket clip and it's, uh, it's a pretty, yeah, that's a pretty shallow carry. If you enjoyed this video and you got like any value from it, would you do me a favor and just uh, let me know by leaving one of these? Don't forget to click on subscribe. Now up on the screen in a second, you're gonna see a couple of videos. One is a video of mine that YouTube is recommending you watch next. The other is my previous video where I did a top five list of my favorite CH knives. All right, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you at the next video. Hey, take care, see you later. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, you know what? We haven't done one of these in a, in a long time. So I want to give away some knives. Let's do, how about December 1st? So 12, 1, 20, which is going to be a Tuesday. I'll go ahead and pick, uh, I'll pick a name. Guess what you'll win. You can pick any knife, any of the 10 knives that I have shown you during this video. There is going to be a code word, but what I want to do is I want to trick the people that didn't watch 
till the end because you actually did. I mean, you, I know it wasn't much work, but you actually sat there and listened to me ramble on and on. So you watched until the end, you're going to be rewarded. The code words are just going to be simply, Hey Jay, because then, you know, a lot of people can, can tell that there's a giveaway by just scrolling through the comments and they see a bunch of funny sentences and they're like, Oh, there must be a giveaway. Mm -mm. We're going to throw, we're going to throw them off the scent. So all you have to do is just put Hey Jay, H E Y J A Y. Just trying to help you out. Subscribers only, please. December 1st on Tuesday. Good luck.